This is Blind Ham News with stories of interest to blind and visually impaired hams. With today's report, here is Steve Bauer, W0QA. This is episode number two of the Blind Ham News podcast. Today, I have two guests on our show. First is Gina, N3NRO. She is uh, the sister to Ronaldo, KN3Q, who sadly became a silent key a few weeks ago. With me is Gina, N3NRO, and we are going to talk about a gentleman that I actually never had a chance to talk to. I do a lot more listening than I do talking, and I heard Ronaldo, uh, KN3Q, on the Blind Hams Bridge many times and enjoyed listening to him. And sadly, here just a few weeks ago, he uh, became a silent key. And Gina, he was your brother, and tell me about him. Well, he was a character. I had plenty of pet nicknames for him. One of the ones I used to call him was DA, and that didn't stand for district attorney. And um, I'll just let you use your imagination. (laughs) Okay, that's good. My brother and I, we used to fight like cats and dogs until our daddy passed away. And we got very, very, very close. It was nothing for him to call me four, five, six times a week, if not even more some weeks. And we'd talk about his job at Walmart, and then we'd talk about ham radio. Actually, Ronaldo was the one who got me hooked into ham radio, because we used to be CBers many years ago. Okay. And his CB handle was Snake, and mine was Little Angel. Talk about opposites. <laughs> Um, but he's the one that got me hooked into ham radio and his original call sign was actually n3 nro okay so it's a vanity call for you then it absolutely is because ronaldo got his n yeah kn3 q um he gave the n3 nro to my dad so when my dad passed away in 2019 i acquired In, I guess, about maybe a month or two months later, if that, my technician license while I was still here in Milwaukee. So I went through the president of the Milwaukee Repeater Club here, signed my license, or should say my test. So after that, in December, I immediately went after the N3 NRO as a vanity sign. And it was instantly approved by the FCC. There you go. Okay. Before the end of 2019, which was really pretty cool. So I've hung on to it, thought about changing it. And now that my brother's no longer here, it's not going anywhere. Keep it in the family. Absolutely. And therefore it did. Did you guys talk on ham radio or was it just telephone? Most of it was telephone. Some of it was the ham radio. And I got to really give you a good example. My brother loved pile-ups on HF extremely a lot so i was in pennsylvania that's when i moved back there for about two years and i belonged to the spark repeater club there and also the red rose repeater club in lancaster and so on field day of 2020 or 21 my brother came in booming up there he called me he says you stand by the radio all right so All of a sudden, he comes in. He says, all right, everybody, hold up. Gina, it's your turn. Key up the mic. He was in South Carolina at the time, working off of his base in the house. But, yeah, it was really cool. So we did do a little bit of talking on ham radio, but a lot of it was almost always on the phone or through the Alexa devices. He would go ahead and say, good night. (laughs) He was a trip. He was a trip. So, in addition to pileups, what did he like to do on the air the most? Um, well, he ran the alligator net. He started that about five years ago, and they still have it running in his memory, of course. And um, it's still pretty much going strong, from what I understand. In his office back in down South Carolina, in Myrtle Beach, actually, he has this picture, huge picture of an alligator. And I don't know what all started the alligator net, but I knew he was one of the founding persons in the net. And it ran, I think, three or four nights a week. There were a couple times when I went in there and I'd help play net control with him. We had a blast. 
Well, I enjoyed listening to him. I always liked the way he said his call sign, just the way he said the, you know, KN3Q, just the way he said the Q, just, I remember that so clearly. Well, he he told me when I first, I said, okay, what's, what's the reason you got that call sign? He says, every king needs three queens. He's like, oh my God. All right, that's you, little brother. <laughs> well, Gina, our condolences are with you and the family at your loss, and we miss hearing him on the air, that's for sure. Well, he's got me back on a blind hams. Um, I was in there for a little bit. I think he's the one that got me kind of into it. And he used to get on my case. You know, you need to get in there. Those guys are always asking about you. You got to get back in there. He's done so much and touched so many lives in the ham road. And he's really, really respected in the in the hobby. And like I said, he's touched so many lives, helped so many people. I was really impressed as I'm finding out more and more how many lives he has touched. Thank all you, Steve, so all much. All right, Gina, I appreciate your time, and we'll look forward to hearing you on the, the uh, Blind Hams uh, All-Star Bridge. All right, thank Bye. you. Now joining me is Joel, W0CAS. And, Joel, we have uh, got an interesting story to tell about, the fact that there is a new award that, uh, well, I'm just going to give you credit for creating, but it's starting up, and I want you to tell us all about it. Well, Steve, uh, a couple of years ago, we lost one of the great Elmers in the Bonham community, Chris Miller, uh, any 5 Victor from down in Texas. He's done several podcasts for the Bonhams, uh, for the CQ Bonhams podcast, tutorials, demos, reviews. He's done a lot for us uh, in the past. And when we lost him a couple of years ago, we did a memorial service on our, one of our tech Zooms. And I thought of an idea that we just uh, start a Chris Miller Elmer of the Year Award. And that's how we got it started. And, of course, you have, uh, with other people's input, decided that the first recipient of this award would be Ronaldo KN3Q. We're giving it to him posthumously. Yeah, that's true. Um, we only known Ronaldo for a short time. I mean, I guess around six months, but he made such a big impact on our group, helping out when the THD 75 came out, and he had got it. He was one of the first ones in our community to get the radio, and he was instrumental in helping others get their radio up and running. And uh, then before that, though, when he uh, he heard about our, our foundation and we're trying to give radios to new blind amateur radio operators as they get their license. And he had a an MDU V380 that he wasn't going to be using, so he passed it down to me and said, give it to a new blind ham. Well, the uh, first two new blind hams that we found already had accessible radios. So I heard about Derek's, the story of Derek uh, up in uh, Vermont, where he's instrumental, you know, the, the uh, first uh, blind ham news store that you ran. So I asked, uh, I asked Ronaldo, I said, what do you think about giving Derek that radio? Because I asked Derek if he had an accessible radio, and Derek said, no, he just had a bow fang. So we, we went ahead and set that on up uh, for Ronaldo. And I, that just made me think of, you know, all the stuff that Ronaldo, he started trying to raise money through the Lions Club to help buy radios for new blind hams, and he got permission to do that from uh, i think one of the presidents of the lions club so you know that just that just put it in my mind that ronaldo is a great elmer and somebody that needs to be remembered and i went and ordered the plaque well, actually we found it at amazon really nice plaque and my wife and i are going to drive over to myrtle beach and and uh, give it to his wife we appreciate your work on that project joel and uh, it's it's a great way to start that annual award Yes, no problem. And we're uh, we're always taking suggestions for Elmers and that helps out the Blindhams community. So if anybody wants to uh, recommend some uh, somebody that's an Elmer that's been instrumental in helping out someone in our uh, our community, please let us know. Either email uh, Blindham News or you can email me joelcase at gmail dot com. All right, Joel, appreciate it. Seven threes. We'll talk to you soon. Seven three, Steve. Have a story or information to submit for the podcast? Send it by email to blindhamnews at gmail.com or call 662 
662-426-6397. That's 662-HAM-NEWS. Thanks for your help. I'm Steve, W0QA, and that's the report this time. I hope you can join me again for another Blind Ham News Podcast. 73, and thanks for listening.